Right. Well, good afternoon. <laughs> uh, my name is Julian, and we'll be talking about uh, open source project that I've managed for the past couple of years. And basically, um, this project came out of um, data kind ASEAN. So, in April two thousand sixteen. We got together with the different chapters in the ASEAN regions, all the different data kind chapters in ASEAN regions, and we decided to see what we can do as a region and not just individual chapters. So, if you have never heard of data kind, they are a non profit organization and they help non profit organizations uh, to basically these are. Um, these are data scientists in their day job and they volunteer their time and their expertise and they look over different non-profit organizations' um, data and basically help them organize their data, see what can they, they can do with it and even uh, basically do a very professionally run uh, data analytics and present it back to these non-profit organizations. And that's what they do. And basically, uh, in 2016, they decided, let's see what we can do together, you know, not just as individual chapters, and we got Healthcare ASEAN came out of it. The idea is that diseases don't keep to their own country boundaries, right? So that's why we think that why not we centralize all these open data, see what we can do out of it, because most healthcare in different countries, they don't share data with other people. So this is the lags. But Nowadays, actually, uh, a lot, some countries are opening up, like the US and some European countries have decided that you know it's actually more um, beneficial to share healthcare data. So for us uh, in Asia, it's still quite close. Uh, healthcare data is still quite close, but we still try to see what op sort of open data we can find, and we decided to start on dengue and malaria first because it's um, quite a focus of um, this region, right? These two diseases are quite. Uh, common. So how do we do that? First, we need to formalize the idea. So we make sure that, you know, this is the problem we have. This is what we're going to do. So what's the ideation? Uh, impact statement. We want to use open data in order to generate an open platform of descriptive and exploratory analysis of malaria and dengue so that individual non-profit and or organization will benefit from it and we will help reduce the risk of these diseases locally. Because uh, if you don't, we don't put it in a central place, we won't be able to see the movements of these diseases in the region. You know, it's just bounded by your region, your, your particular country, or even your particular state, which is quite small, right? Next, what we do we do? Of course, we have a plan, right? Whatever project it is, big, small, the UN have a plan, you know, things like that. They always have a plan. And this is what we do. We come up with a plan. First thing we do, we research on the data. We do the research. What does that mean? We find out everything we can in terms of open data, what sort of data we will be facing, what sort of data we can collect. For different countries, there will be different uh, languages. And we are very, very lucky to have people who really support us from, uh, who knows the different languages in the region. So we have uh, Data Kind Vietnam, uh, Hanoi, I think it was Hanoi, I can't remember. My not sure which chapter, but somebody from Vietnam who really um, find out for us what sort of data they can find for out of Vietnam. And this is good because non nobody else knows Vietnamese, right? And stuff like that. So we've, we make sure uh, we actually document what uh, data we have first to see what we can play with, what we can work with. And from there, we collate it. We have a plan out of this data to figure out how we can use it, what sort of uh, data we will be looking at, what sort of granularity we will be looking at. And of course, malaria and dengue, we straight away we realized that you know uh, we can't get away at looking at the weather data as well. So these three things are key that we will be looking at. The geography, the diseases, the, case, the cases, and the weather. And another thing we realized out of our research is that for diseases, we look at it in a weekly granularity. So nothing else would work. Daily definitely doesn't work because when you report a case, it's when you have already been infected, you have a fever, that's not when you actually get infected. So it's, we usually look at it in a weekly basis. So from there, we decided that if we can, wherever we can, we go and find the weekly data, which is not true for all countries. Some countries, we only get yearly data. Some countries, we have none. Some countries, we still uh, manage to get monthly data, which is better than yearly. And Singapore obviously have the cleanest data set, not the longest, 
bar period, but it is the cleanest data set that we can find. So we start with uh, Singapore as our base. So how we plan our project? We have the team. Obviously, we try to find everybody, uh, uh, the right number of people for each uh, sections, the analysis, the research method, know-how for the different countries, uh, knowing of the different languages, uh, the different resources, we list it out so that everybody can see where they can get the different resources, the links, the uh, uh, the trailer board, of course, the different trailer board. I think we managed to, uh, over two years, have three trailer boards on top of the GitHub project page. Whatever is in progress, all the different tasks, that's a um, separate thing. So, of course, every single step from the, uh, every single step of the planning is documented. Documentation is very, very important. First thing everybody look at is what's the uh, problem statement, what is the goals of the project, and then we structure everything very cleanly so that people know uh, where to look for, for the information, where they should uh, write their source codes in, where, sh where uh, they should put their documentation, where they can find all the different, uh, the granularity, project set up for any new beginners, uh, clean uh, file structure as well for our Google Drive. And all these links are of course, inside the resources. All these things are inside there. So everything is documented, everything is online, nothing is kept hidden so that we can find information wherever. All right. So those are really keys for most uh, open data projects or open uh, source projects, documentation, make sure everything is out there online. You can find it. Of course, breaking down the task is one of the key things that we find that really, really useful. Make sure the tasks are as small as possible, as uh, easily completed as possible. So most of the people who are willing to help, they want to get something out of it. They don't know Python, for example. They want to learn Python. Give them an easy task, they get to learn Python, we get to get the job done. Right? So those are really helpful, basically. They, it's a quick pro quo, you know. These sort of things, um, people usually want to get something out, they want to feel good out of completing a task, you know. And we break it down so we have the data collection, uh, automatic data collection for every single country, um, every single site is a separate task. Uh, and then the cleaning is also a separate task. The visualization, all separate tasks, whether it's to do, we put them in different cards, whether it's blocked, whether there's any issues, all of it documented on this trailer board. And of course, last year, GitHub, happily have a project board for us, right? Um, before last year, GitHub never had a project board. Now they do, and really it helped a lot. So now we transfer all the tasks that we used to have on trailer board, transfer it onto GitHub. So we have all the small little tasks. Wonderground API, oh, this is a bug. Okay, never mind. Uh, refactor the download script, you know, as small as possible, as uh, so that people can complete it as easily as possible. All the in-progress tasks, all the tasks that are completed that, so that we need to create unit tests on. And yep, yeah. so and there's a couple of others as well. The documentation is here, right? So documentation also, they need uh, uh, specific tasks for documentation as small as possible so that it can be done. And that really helps people to find out, you know, what's needed to be done, what has been done already, who is doing what, what is in progress. These are important keys. And all of this is all this information all online. People can find it easily, you know. And we need to set up a framework. So for any project, right? Um, if there's no framework, it gets out of hand very quickly. So this year we really make sure that we follow a very standard uh, architecture. Right here we have the documentations, the docs, the models, notebooks, reference reports, source, and test. Obviously, what will be the key for most people will be the source folder and the test folder. Nobody has tried the docs folder yet, which is unfortunate. <laughs> yep. But yeah, so ideally, basically, uh, whatever you write in the source will be reflected in the docs as well as your test folder, right? And of course, the readme. The readme is key. The readme will give you all the uh, architectures. 
and the requirements. So all this is in the README file. We have our project organization and each folder, the description of each folder, what the intention for each folder is all documented what's going on. Uh, they can jump in at any time. They can uh, come back at any time and they will still know where the project is at. And of course, this here is um, one section that uh, I made the mistake of not doing this from the start. So we actually implemented the testing, uh, the unit test folder like quite late, I think a couple of months back only, and this was like uh, almost one and a half years into the project, and that was my biggest mistake. So I only implemented it when the project has gone out of hand, when there's bugs coming out that, you know, the, the um, the owner of the project, me, can no longer um, handle. So yes, test actually should be the first thing to do. It's easiest to do when the project is still small. It's easiest to maintain from then on. After the project start, you know, um, getting out of hand, it's already somewhat too late already, right? Uh, yeah, so that's, yeah, biggest mistake. But, oh well, never mind. We can still turn around, you know, we can still carry on. So. I will learn from my mistake and hopefully we can still clean up all the bugs. And yeah, so testing and logs are quite important. So, but again, in case you have to prepare the structure for them. So we created a folder and have the task ready so that people can pick up the task, have a place to put in their test case and Test and progress is one of those things that um, a lot of projects tr struggle to find the, um, the steady progress to keep up your projects. A lot of, we, we have seen a lot, a lot of dead projects, yeah. So as long as this project did not become a dead project, I'm actually very happy. So luckily for me, I found a platform for me to get new blood into the project, right? So we have uh, regular events. So last year we had a weekly social coding where I introduced this project and I, I introduced a couple of, I give them, I usually give uh, the members a couple of selections of open source projects and majority, I would say more than 90% chose to work on the healthcare data project. Well, mainly because it's Python and it's, this is one of the best uh, programming language nowadays, so everybody wants to learn Python. Yeah, so uh, they find this uh, healthcare ASEAN very, and that's how I get new blood into working on this project, which is great. I mean, for me to actually get the the project to the point where there's a lot of bugs means that it's growing. You know, it has grown to that stage. Yeah. So for any projects. Especially for open source projects, we need to really, really, really persevere, right? And that's the key. So it doesn't matter if that bugs. At the end of the day, we will get our goals happen. We will have the data and we will have this. So I think this one is dengue fever for, for Singapore. No, no, this one is dengue, dengue fever for Malaysia. So you can see there's always a spike, regardless of the year. And for 2014, um, there's a larger population, you know, there's a population growth, so you can very easily see growth. And of course, 2010 is the, there's a bigger uh, trend, and there's always a spike roughly around the same time because of the monsoon season. I don't have the weather data superimposed, but the weather, usually the monsoon season is around here. And then we have the dengue fever after. And this is malaria for Singapore. So malaria actually follow a very different trend from dengue fever in uh, Singapore. The malaria, uh, we found that uh, if you map it out on the map, Malaria tends to happen around the ponds areas, uh, reservoir areas. That's where the malaria are usually found. Dengue fever are usually found in areas where high population, lots of HDB flats, then you get high dengue fever. 
uh, cases. So, and they also follow slightly different uh, weather trends. Okay, um, and yep, that's it. If uh, any of you have any questions about the project, anybody interested to contribute? Who are the <coughs> types of people who you would hope that would use this data? Are they like public officials or yes. uh, healthcare organizations? Healthcare organizations would be our key. So if you see here, we, we identified that healthcare uh, organizations would actually be the ones that would be most benefit from our, uh, our project. So, yep, individual and all non-profit organizations would probably be the ones. Um, individuals can't do much, but they are the ones that supply us with the data. So for any of these countries that actually the government don't open up their weekly um, uh, disease cases, actually we find that sometimes the public are the ones that they, they have a uh, uh, stick into the issue, right? To them, it's, it's key. They collect uh, and give us this data, this data, and we this is scrape from them. And we put it together, and then um, hopefully, yeah, the healthcare organizations. How do you collect enough data from the public to, to get uh, uh, usable data? So yeah, so the public depending because if let's say you stay in well, Singapore, we don't have issue because the government uh, just publicize the data, right? Uh, they very clearly. But uh, let's say Malaysia, uh, and if you stay in the high population areas, are the ones that have most of these diseases, right? So let's say Kuala Lumpur, and you stay in uh, Taman, right? And you know the statistics. This uh, this. Uh, reported in the newspaper. So these people, they are pretty good. They collect this information, they put it on a portal. They don't store the data. Unfortunately, uh, the problem is that they don't store. Singapore also, actually, Singapore, there's a cup, uh, couple of people who really diligently record all this data from NEA and they report the dengue clusters in Singapore, for example. The first step uh, when you start to work with this project is to load the scripts, run the scripts to load all the data? Automatically download data. So yes. data scraping, yes. Why it's not um, already available on GitHub? Uh, the, one of the things we find about storing the data on GitHub is that we want to make sure this is reproducible code. And this is open data that we can get out of the internet. If the site is down, it's no longer considered open. I mean, it's, it's also um, use, useful. I do see the, the pros of you know, storing the data in case a particular site just goes down. You, know, you at least you have that data ready available. We have another folder for that. We, we try. We don't always uh, keep track of it. But what we do is that we also, in, for our initial research, right, we actually have this data stored you know, on Google Drive. So yes, we do have a folder that we store the data. But on GitHub, it's uh, auto automatically downloaded. We utilize real time. Uh, data scraping and anybody who uh, comes into the project brand new they can just uh, run one script they will start scraping all the data into the data folder but, and how big is that data no not big okay. not big couple of max it's not big yeah so uh, the biggest problem is actually finding the, the necessary data even for singapore where we have weekly data is less than a max it's a couple of kilobytes that's it but you need to download it straight from the source. Yeah, we want. That's one of the other um, key of this project that we want to do is basically all the codes needs to be reproducible by somebody else at home. Yeah. So the scripts would break if the data sources change. Yes. Uh, yes, and we have seen that happen, especially um, Wonderground. Wonderground has recently changed the API, so it broke come some of our codes, so it became a bug. <laughs> It does happen, yes. But um, that's the thing with um, projects, you, uh, especially open source projects, you have to keep up with the, the internet. Sorry, you have a question? I'm just curious a bit, uh, at the beginning class, you just mentioned that um, like they can share, they're willing to share the data with you, right? But as far as I know, I mean, because I support public market, um, and um, 
for the company which is specialized in healthcare and pharmaceutical product. And I know that only in Vietnam, I'm not sure but um, the, the project is supporting for Southeast Asia countries, yep. but when it's going to Vietnam, we have something called a privacy law uh, in healthcare. So yep. I'm not really sure and it's really strict and my company got some problem with the privacy law. Um, no, it doesn't actually infringe on the privacy law at all because these are actually just numbers, the case numbers. There is no names, no individuals, nothing. It's just case number in a particular district. Yeah. Uh, Vietnam, we, uh, we actually have uh, one of our Vietnamese um, data kind member who really um, gave us the data on Vietnam actually, which was really good. And another member from Women Who Code from Thailand, she's the one that gave, uh, found the data from Thailand for us because again, it's in Thai and non-Thai speakers find it hard to go through all the Thai sites, even with Google Translate. So what you just, you just gonna watch it, make sure what you mean is that the figures and numbers of the cases? So for Vietnam, for example, the minimum that we do get is from uh, WHO, World Health Organization, which is a yearly data. But we still take that data, even though it's yearly. So some countries, we do notice that we have zero data from like Cambodia, uh, also from Myanmar, but there's nothing we can do about that. You said, I, I apologize, but how long have you been working on the project? Uh, since 2016. So the research, uh, we did our research over the period of uh, April to August, September of 2016. And only around August, then we really start on the coding data scraping site. Mm -hmm. Do you have any government agencies has already consumed uh, uh, data coming out from, from your system? No, no, no. So governments, uh, they only care about the countries. Right. Yeah, they don't really care what happened in other countries. Or other institutions, other health institutions? No, no, no. Not so far, no. Uh, we haven't reached that stage yet, unfortunately. But that, that is our goal, that it can be beneficial to somebody. Yes. You mentioned that you have a lot of data scientists uh, participating. Anyone from healthcare that's kind of helping provide some insight into... Yeah, occasionally, yes. Occasionally we have somebody from healthcare who basically um, look through our data and look through our scripts and our methods. And to be honest, they weren't 100% happy with how it's done, but um, they didn't say no altogether also. They, yeah, they were like sitting on a fence, haven't decided <laughs> whether or not it's going to work. Yeah, these are things that you won't know until it's done. Sometimes, yeah. Sorry. Um, is there a good place for people if they're interested in getting involved? Is there like, and you have kind of, the Trello idea is really good at laying everything out. Mm -hmm. Is there like a guidance of how someone might get started? What they should yeah. Help on? So we, we have it all on GitHub. Everything is open. Um, so. If you are interested, basically I actually have more information on the yep, the meetup page actually have slightly more that those will give you links to the Trello board. The GitHub doesn't, but actually the GitHub itself has everything you need. The Trello boards are outdated. So we have now moved to use the GitHub's uh, project board. Yep, and we also, we have a Slack uh, account, but the Slack account, uh, you have to email uh, datakind.sg for permission to join the Slack account. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>